Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna be discussing some herbs that have been clinically proven to have radioprotective effects, meaning that they can help protect your body and health against the damaging effects of radiation. The topic of radiation and its effects on human health is similar to that of fluoride. It's a substance that has been continuously debated on being something that's safe and something that's not to worry about or something that's completely detrimental and hazardous to our health. However, according to my research and understanding and the very extensive research of others, it seems to be obvious that the effects of radiation are very damaging, even in low amounts. So the thing is with radiation, like like fluoride is although there might not be a ton of it around you at any given moment granted unless you are living next door to a power plant or you have experienced an atomic bomb going off somewhere within your vicinity the fact of the matter is there are multiple everyday common sources or sites of radiation that people are exposed to on a very acute and chronic basis meaning that although you might not be exposed to a lot of radiation at once. Most people in the modern world are exposed to a low level amount or acute amount of radiation all of the time. And over time, that radiation exposure can cause damage to your health. And the basic negative effect that radiation has on the body, and at least according to study, is the fact that radiation can induce reactive oxygen species in the form of peroxyl radicals that follows a cascade of events leading to DNA damage such as single or double strand breaks base damage, and DNA or DNA protein crosslinks, and these lesions cluster as complex local multiple damage sites. In fewer words, radiation induces oxidative stress that can cause cellular damage. And because our bodies are just a collection of cells, over time, enough oxidative stress to our cells can lead to more widespread damage to our tissues organs, and ultimately our entire body. So this is the reason that we want to avoid radiation exposure is because it ultimately ages our cells. And with enough radiation exposure, it can be a major contributing factor to accelerated aging and the formation of various degenerative diseases. Fortunately, there are plants, natural botanicals or herbs, some of the herbs that we talk about a lot on this YouTube channel that have protective effects against radiation. And although each of these plants have a different mechanism, which we'll discuss in a moment, Ultimately, it is the polyphenols or plant chemicals that are in these herbs that provide powerful antioxidant effects through the ability of increasing the antioxidant capacity or production in the body. So the production of master antioxidants like glutathione and superoxide dismutase while inhibiting the production of free radicals that would be induced by the stress of radiation. So in other words, these herbs have powerful protective chemicals that help our bodies mitigate the damage that is caused by radiation radiation, which is going to protect our cells and DNA from damage, mutation, and aging. So with all that being said, what I want to do with you now is go through this study and point out a couple of these key herbs that have been proven to have these radioprotective effects, which you might want to implement into your daily routine if you're somebody that is either exposed to radiation or you're just concerned about that acute exposure to radiation that I was talking about. And in either case, all of these herbs ultimately are gonna have powerful antioxidant effects and therefore can be anti-aging on a cellular level, whether you're worried about radiation or not. So getting right to it, the first herb that is mentioned in this article to have radioprotective effects is one of my personal favorite herbs, ginkgo biloba. According to the study, an intravenous infusion of an alcohol extract of ginkgo biloba leaves at a dose of 100 milligrams per person was found to be effective in patients with vasogenic edema observed after irritation of the brain. It was reported to protect against the classiogenic factors from plasma of human subjects exposed to irritation. And perhaps the most interesting study is that at an oral dose of 40 milligrams, three times daily for only two months, Ginkgo biloba was found to be effective for treating people, recovery workers who were exposed to radiation accidents. Moving along, another herb mentioned in the study to have radioprotective effects is holy basil. In a mouse study, holy basil supplementation was found to have radioprotective effects against radiation-induced mortality, spleen damage, chromosome aberrations, and bone marrow cell mutations. Apart from these effects, 
Holy basil was also reported to protect against radiation-induced lipid peroxidation and a reduction in glutathione concentration. So in conclusion, holy basil actually can reduce the mortality rate of radiation exposure while protecting your vital organs from radiation and your DNA in cells. At the same time, it can help to increase or protect your antioxidant capacity from becoming depleted while also preventing lipid peroxidation. Now, there are other herbs mentioned in this study to have radioprotective effects, but for the sake of brevity and not being redundant, I'm going to stop here because most of the other herbs mentioned in this study have very similar mechanisms to that of the holy basil and the ginkgo biloba, which is that they help to balance the antioxidant capacity to free radicals in the body, increase the production of antioxidants like glutathione and superoxide dismutase while generally protecting your cells from the stress of radiation which is that it induces free radical damage or oxidative stress. So there are plenty of other herbs that you can use but generally speaking anything that has a proven antioxidant effect should be beneficial for protecting your body against the free radical damage caused by radiation. So for example, consuming vitamin C rich foods or foods rich in things like vitamin E, which are powerful antioxidants, would also be beneficial in addition to taking herbs like ginkgo biloba and holy basil. So instead of going through a very long list of herbs that all have the same effect, what I'd like to do instead to close this video is quickly cover some of the common sources of radiation so that way you can start to avoid these things and remove a source of radiation from your life while also taking radioprotective herbs. So the first place you're going to want to look out for is your water. Keep in mind that the water we get through the tap through our houses comes from the city, which does ultimately come from some sort of natural body of water, usually some sort of river. And a lot of these rivers and natural bodies of water happen to be very close to nuclear power plants and other industrial buildings where they are very vulnerable to radiation and other toxic substances. So this is the importance of getting a high quality filter or just drinking filtered water, getting your water from a spring nearby, and testing your water if you're really interested in whether or not it has toxic levels of radiation or other substances. But I think generally speaking, if you're getting distilled water or you know a carbon filtered or reverse osmosis or charcoal filtered water, you're probably not going to have any radiation issues. But it is worth knowing that most tap water and city water and sometimes even natural bodies of water that are near nuclear power plants or other industrial sites can be a source of radiation. Other common sources of radiation are going to be things like the television, most electronics, Wi-Fi, as well as x-rays. So these are things that are generally around most people's homes and a lot of times people get an x-ray once or twice a year if they're going to the dentist at the doctor or something and all of these things, these sort of consumer products or electronics tend to put off a certain degree of radiation. And again, it's not much to where it's gonna damage your health, but if you're exposed to it all of the time, this can be damaging over the long term. So the thing you're gonna to wanna to do here is minimize your use with electronics or your contact with them, shut off your Wi-Fi before you go to bed and put your phones on airplane mode, which will reduce your collective radiation exposure. Another common site for radiation is radon. So most of the times when you move into a house or if you buy a house, you have to have the radon levels checked to make sure that they are not sky high or at a level that is going to be damaging to your health. So if you're buying a house, make sure you have it checked for radon or if you're renting someplace, talk to the landlord and make sure that they've tested for radon and have them show you the results. Another common place you might find yourself being exposed to radiation is via plane travel. So mostly going through the x-ray machines through security is where you're gonna find a heavy amount of radiation. Those x-ray machines put off radiation that can be damaging to your health if you're somebody who's traveling regularly. So I usually recommend for anybody that's concerned about radiation or if you have a weak immune system to just opt out instead. And lastly, another place you're gonna find yourself exposed to an acute level of radioactive chemicals is through the consumption of industrial foods and non-organic produce. So a lot of the produce that is being raised commercially or conventionally that is non-organic uses a heavy amount of fertilizers, pesticides, and herbicides which do contain residues of radioactive particles. So this is also true for cigarettes. If you're smoking cigarettes from a commercial uh, vendor, somebody that isn't raising organic tobacco, then 
That tobacco plant or leaf is likely heavily fertilized and sprayed with herbicides and pesticides. And then you smoke that and that tar holds onto the radioactive chemicals. Just like when you eat an inorganic or non-organic piece of produce that has a herbicide or pesticide on it or a fertilizer on it, it can get into your digestive system and into your body. And I bring these things up because although they might be uh, very low levels or trace amounts of radioactive particles in them, the fact of the matter is we eat frequently multiple times a day and most people who smoke smoke more than once a day. So although there might not be a large amount of radiation or radioactive particles in the food uh, in one single meal or one single cigarette, the frequency at which we eat, you know, we eat multiple times a day, every day our whole lives. Most people who smoke, smoke more than once a day and for many years throughout their lives. And over time, these radioactive chemicals can compound and it can add up inducing some sort of oxidative stress that could be damaging your health. So as you can see, most things that put off radiation are very unnatural, very non-organic. And this is the importance of, you know, leading a life that is less heavily reliant on the industrial system in a life that is a bit more natural. So whether that's consuming organic natural foods, you know, not smoking or drinking, and getting an environment that is less industrial in general, drinking clean water, all of these things, but one of the major reasons that people want to do these things is to reduce the amount of oxidative stress that their body is exposed to on a regular basis. So for most people watching this, you're probably already adhering to these tips. So if you want some additional support or radio protection, then I would highly recommend looking into the use of ginkgo biloba or holy basil or reading the article that I mentioned to get a more extensive list of herbs that have radio protective effects. All right, guys, that brings this video to a close. If you've enjoyed it and found it helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're new here and you haven't yet already. If you're interested in checking out the study I mentioned in this video, or if you're interested in supplementing with either ginkgo biloba holy basil, or any of the other herbs mentioned in this article, you can find links to both of these things in the description box below, along with links to our blog and our online wellness academy.